Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to install Cisco Unity Connection version 12.5. To get started you are going to need an OVA template. If you have a Cisco account you can uh, download that straight from their website. I will drop the link in the description. Um, otherwise you'll have to find someone who has an account or get it from somewhere else or just find the specs and create it manually. Um, and then you are also going to need an image. Now either you have an account and a contract and you can get this from Cisco Putt, which is uh, um, uh, you order it, they send you a link and then you can download the image and then it's bootable. Or you can download it from here and make a bootable ISO. I did a video that shows you how to do that. Um, so you can look back in this series if that's what you need to do. I already have an OVA and I already have um, uh, an image from Putt, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So I'll do create, register VM, and deploy a virtual machine from an OVF or OVA file. And I'm just going to drop it right in there. And then the name will be lab cuc-01. Next, I'm going to leave that how it is. I will agree to Cisco's EULA. I'm going to put that in the VM network. Um, thin provision. Just going to leave that all the same. And I'm going to finish. And now I need to put the ISO um, <coughs> in the CD drive of that. Um, I already did that ahead of time, but if you needed to do that, uh, I went into do a data store, data store browser, and I have an ISO folder already. And then you just click upload, and um, I have the um, ISO on my computer already that I uploaded. But however you obtain your ISO, upload it to your data store so that you can um, access it through your VM. So I'm going to go back over to virtual machines. I'm going to select. I'm going to power that off. It shouldn't be on. Um, lab CUC01. And I'm going to edit settings. And then down here at CD DVD drive connected data store ISO file. And then I'm going to find that ISO that I uploaded. Select. And let me just make sure that everything is there. Yep, that looks good. Save. And then I'm going to power on. I'm just going to pause as it goes through this initial sequence. I'm just going to skip. And Cisco Unity Connection. So um, to move around, you press Tab, Enter, Select, and 12.4, 5 35 Yes. Okay. So it's asking me if I want to set up everything like the IP address, the host name, all that good stuff before it installs or after. And I want to proceed and set that up ahead of time. Would you like to install an upgrade patch as part of this installation? No, I would not. This is the basic installation option. That is fine. And for my time zone, I'm going to choose America, Detroit, since I am in the Eastern time zone. Mix feed and duplex. Proceed with the installation. I do not want to change the MTU size. No, I do not want to use DHCP. So now it wants me to set up the name. And I'm going to call this lab CUC-01. And let me think of an IP address. I think I have dot .12 was my call manager subscriber so I will go with dot thirteen obviously this is going to depend on whatever IP scheme you have at your network worker lab you'll have to figure that out so but for me it's going to be 10.0.0.13 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 
and the IP mask is going to be a slash 24 mask and the gateway is 10.0.0.1 tab enter for OK you want to enable DNS client mm, no I'm not going to I don't need that administrator ID and actually I think I am going to enable DNS. I pulled up my lab DNS server and I'm going to do a new host and I'm going to name this lab cuc-01 and it's filling in that for me and then I'm going to put in 10.0.0.13 and it's going to create a pointer record and I'm just going to do that and it was created successfully and I'm done so I will now move back to my Unity connection installation. So I'm going to actually go back and it's going to ask me for DNS again and this time I'm going to say yes. And I just want to do this because I think I might add mail down the road and I think it will just make a couple things easier. Um, and my fictitious company name Uptime network and voice.com. Let me just make sure I got that all spelled right and okay. Okay, so it's gonna be the platform administration username and password. So this is what you're gonna use to log into OS administration and to log into the CLI. So just make sure you keep track of this, or you're gonna have a bad time. that's going to be separate from the web page administration where you edit users and all that okay so this is going to be for certificate um, stuff so not I mean not super important um, for the lab but just make sure that this is accurate if it's for your your uh, uh, production environment so I'll say the organization is uptime network and voice and the unit is lab cuc-01 and the location is Grand Rapids state is MI United States and OK so that information will pop up when you go to that site and it says this device is not secure you can look at the certificate and see that information is this server the first known in the cluster yes it is so one quick note um, if you don't have NTP set up I have another video on that um, you need to make sure you have NTP running and I actually have that running on um, my uh, Windows server it's uh, running under Mineberg let me see if I can find that and yep that's really easy just Google Mineberg get that set up on a, a computer um, and there's I believe I have another video about it. I'll look through it and see if I can link it but um, the installation will not complete without an NTP server so maybe you already have one but if you don't have one you're gonna have to get one up and running somewhere on your network for it to work um, so going back here so that's the same IP address as my uh, DNS server and my DHCP server that server is doing it all for my little lab here okay so this is the password that um, your um, server is going to use to connect to other nodes in the network so once again do not forget what this is or you are going to have a bad time do you want to configure SMTP um, I wish I had a mail server on my lab but I don't right now that's something that I'll probably do down the road because everybody knows it's nice to get your voicemails emailed to you application username administrator so this is what I was talking about these are the credentials that you will use to log into the actual web page itself um, so you to manage users some system configurations so once again remember that for your own sake platform configuration is complete so I'm gonna hit enter and then I'm going to hope and pray that everything goes uh, smoothly I'm gonna put this video on pause and hopefully the next screen is me turning on some services 
Okay, it is much later and I am at the login and I logged in. So I'm going to do a utils service list and see how the services are looking. And that is pretty good. So I'm going to go to the web page 10.0.13. In Cisco Unity Connection. And I don't think like call manager that I have to go ahead and activate everything. So we have Unity all set or uh, not all set up, installed, and um, all the services are running. Um, I can uh, go into serviceability to check that. So I'm in serviceability. I can go to tools, service activation, and see what else. So DirSync, I'm pretty sure that's for Active Directory, which I'm going to want. And then serviceability reporter, what the heck, might as well start that too. Check all services and save activating deactivating may take a while that's okay I'm just gonna activate everything because I'm not worried about process and when I go to add active directory and sync to call manager I don't want one of these to be a trip up and just be banging my head wondering what's going on so there we have it um, services are activated it's all installed um, so that is that is about it for this video um, in the next one I will go through the process of actually connecting this to call manager setting up the voicemail ports it can be a little bit tricky so I'm not gonna put this all into one video this one's already 12 minutes long but uh, stay tuned for the next one if you're interested in learning how to connect this to Cisco call manager and then we can start sending callers to voicemail uh, thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and there will be more on the way. Thank you.